How to be a highly productive prompt crafter. Hello my friends, how are you doing? Yesterday I showed you how to deepfake, today I give you superpowers. This is using the local stable diffusion install automatic 1111 installation video here. Also don't forget to join my live stream this Sunday. So we all know that prompt crafting takes a lot of time and experimentation, but you can automate that. Here we are in the text to image tab. We will leave the prompt field empty for now and scroll to the bottom where it says script. This is where the magic happens. Click on the pop down menu and you will see prompts from file or text box, prompt matrix and x epsilon plot. Let's start with prompts from file or text box. You have two choices here. One is to drop in a normal text file. Every line in the text file is going to be a different prompt. Or you can also click here on show text box and then write your prompts line for line into that text box. I would suggest to take a text file because you can save that and change that anytime you want. Go to the location of the text file and simply drop it in here. One thing that I found is when you change the text file, you need to click on the X here to remove it and then drop it in again because it is not automatically updated in the web UI. In the text file, you can put as many prompts as you want. I will set my custom seat in here and click on generate. You can see it rendered through all of my suggested prompts. So I have a young Japanese woman, an old Japanese woman, I have a German looking woman and an elfish looking woman, all with the same prompt details otherwise. Now you might be wondering why this and this image is so different. The reason is that the AI, even with all of the other settings the same and using the same seat, will still sometimes change the art style. What if you are happy with the prompt you created, but you want to test the prompt against different settings and sampling methods? This brings us to our next choice here. Go down to script and now select X by Epsilon plot. Now in here there's a lot of different options like seat, Variation seat, variation strength, steps, CFG scale, prompt S2R, which means search and replace, sampler and checkpoint name. In this video, I will show you some of the simpler to understand. Let me know in the comments if you want to have a video about the rest of the options too. When you set it to nothing, of course, on this scale, nothing will happen. For our first test for the X type, let's set our CFG scale, which means how close the AI is staying with the prompt you suggested. And on the Epsilon type, we are going to set the steps. Now here's how to enter number values. When I set the CFG scale 3 to 5, which is written 3 minus 5, it will go in full numbers, which means 3, 4, 5. If you want to go in half steps, to get that, what you write is 3 minus 5 and then a round bracket plus 0 0.5, another closing round bracket. And now it goes 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5. But what instead of adding math, you want to define the number of variations in between the range you have defined. Let's do this with the steps. So I want to try out between 10 steps and 40 steps. I only want to have, let's say, five different variations. So this time, leave a space as before also in the first line and then use a square bracket and write five and close the square bracket. One more thing you want to set up here is to make a check mark next to draw legend because this will give you an amazing overview. Let's give it a test. Depending on how many different variations you request, you will end up with a lot of renders. So you can see here we have the CFG scale, different variations, and the step variations. In this case, we have five different, so you can see it went from 10 to 17, 25, 32, and 40. Not something you would usually do, but I wanted to show you that this works. When we zoom into this, you can see we are getting a lot of variation and you can find from this raster the best result from all the renders or multiple if you like. 
Keep in mind that this has also rendered all of these images in full resolution, so whatever you find here as a sweet spot, you already have the finished image. Now that we have tried with different steps and CFG scale, how about different sampling methods? Let's go to the Epsilon type, select the sampler, and this time the way we enter this is simply by writing the name. After the name of each sampler, write a comma, leave a space and write the next name. For this I'm choosing three different methods, Euler, Ancestral, LMS and Hoyn. And I'm also reducing the CFG scale to just three different variations. Let's click on Generate. This time you can see that there is quite a lot of difference between the different sample methods. So with Euler Ancestral we have this painterly type, but then with LMS and also with Hoyne, in this case we have created a rather illustration type of style. So you can see that trying different sample methods and other settings makes a lot of sense and help you be more creative without having to put all of them by hand. But what if you want to replace an individual word in your prompt? Well, for this, we are going to use prompt SR, which means search and replace. The way this works is pretty easy. Look for a single word in your prompt you want to use. In this case, I'm using the word woman. And then also write it down here because this is the word that we are looking for to replace. For this, I'm going to write woman, men, old men and old woman. These are always separated with a comma and the space behind the comma. Let's click on Generate. This has beautifully rendered our different variations and also has included the first word. Next, let's try the prompt matrix. For this, you can suggest different words in the prompt and it will try all the possible combinations. To use this method in script, select prompt matrix. Then go into your prompt field, enter the prompt as you want, then hit space and then at the end of it type space, make a vertical pipe character, which is this kind of straight line going down and then leave another space and write the different, for example, styles you want to have. If you use it in this format, these variations will be added to the end of your prompt. If you want to have them at the start of your prompt instead, scroll down and select here put variable parts at start of prompt. Make a check mark here. Now the important thing here is even though they are put at the start, you still need to write them at the end in your prompt box. Let's click on generate. Because I entered four different arguments, pencil sketch, oil painting, photography and watercolor, I'm ending up with 16 different results, which is four by four. You can see in the grid overview that the text that is crossed out is not used and the one that is written normally is used. So by this, you can easily find that all of these images use pencil sketch and they are combined either with nothing, with watercolor, with photography, or with watercolor and photography. So this at the end has three different arguments, which is a pencil sketch watercolor photography. Not only is this extremely powerful to test different prompts, this can also make you much more productive because you can create variations of the same prompt in different styles or with different words and arguments exchanged. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it and thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah, I wish you a good weekend.